The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. So Dr. Aladati, I, I appreciate that you uh, do it more superficially, but they're clearly doctors who can take uh, three or more centimeters of cervix tissue as part of the LEAP procedure. Right. So whether, whether you know this or not, the cervix has three innervations, okay? It's the pelvic nerve, the hypogastric nerve, and the vagus nerve. And they're involved, yes, in reproduction, as you say, but they're clearly involved in sexuality. Uh, the vagus is a very important nerve for orgasm. If the leap goes too deep, these things happen. I've interviewed many women like Rhonda who have this problem. I, I think the issue is, like in men, as a urologist, I see prostate cancer and its consequences sexually discussed with the patients, but you don't, and other gynecologists, for whatever reason, don't discuss the sexual consequences, potentially, from cervix uh, surgery. It sounds like not all the leaps are, leaps are being performed in the same fashion. It sounds right. like in your hands, you're talking millimeters yeah. of tissue. As depth. I said, like depth-wise, depth -wise. Right. excisional biopsy, right. where in the scenario that Dr. Goldstein is describing, three centimeters of your cervix, well, that's, that's a your whole, cervix. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's that is like, cervix. yes. May I ask both of you then, do you have suggestions for a woman who needs to go into this procedure? How can they make sure that the person is taking the millimeters and not the whole cervix? How do you safeguard and make sure you're choosing the right practitioner for this procedure? Okay. Again, you have to do your research. If you look for someone who's done this, just like any other surgeries. If you want to go for hip replacement, you want to go to someone who's done a lot of hip replacement. The person who does a lot of hip replacement might be different than the one who does knee replacement. So it's always good to find someone who specializes in that procedure and then you'll be safe. Dr. I mean, Goldstein, go ahead and jump in. I see you're anxious to make a comment. I, I, I think it's really important that the woman describe to the doctor that her orgasm is primarily cervical in origin. Some women, it's not, and maybe the leap for them is, is not an issue. But if that woman's life pleasure, her life quality, emanates from uterine contractions during orgasm, that leap is a serious risk factor for her. And it's Are there discussion any between the two doctors. In that well, case? There's plenty of alternatives. Yes, we can discuss them. There's leap, there's there's uh, cryosurgery, there's uh, laser, there's cone biopsy. She could describe those quite well. Right. So you can't use cryotherapy for high-grade lesions. You're just going to mask the high-grade lesions, and they're going to, in, You're you not know, gonna be able to examine the cell. Yeah, there's correct? no tissue. They're just. It's going to invade into the cervix. If you have, I want you to listen to me. I've done this for many years. If you have high-grade lesions on your cervix, uh, you need to remove them. A leap procedure in the hand of an experienced surgeon has minimal risk. You will not have sexual dysfunction if it's done right. I'm talking about removing just the superficial layer of a cervix that's about four to five centimeters long. It will not affect your sexual intercourse. If it's done right, you're okay.